job and get $5,000. What do you prefer? $500 or $5,000? Empowerment. Empowerment is what the ILP will bring to the people. And we are not trying to reuse and redo and even create new systems. We are trying to fix the ones that we have and make them better. Make them work better. And to even imagine in a day, in 2015, a woman have to make a baby on the sidewalk of Trinidad and Tobago after billions of dollars of it spent in the health industry. Billions of dollars and yet still an ambulance from Kirep, from Mount Hope to Kirep is five minutes away or less and yet still that woman was able to give birth on the side of the street. Is this the kind of government that you voted for in 2010? No way. Is this the type of change that you looked for in 2010? No way. And we are asking you and we are saying to you tonight to join with us in the ILP and let's close that dark chapter in our lives. Let's move on to a chapter of empowerment because this is what this is what our country needs now. And to the lady, anybody that knows that lady, we are asking that you, if you can contact us at 800 Start the next chapter in our lives. If we, we, we keep reading and rereading the last one. Are you ready to step forward with the ILP? Yeah. Or are you willing to keep rereading the chapters of hopelessness and despair and start of the previous administration? Are you ready to restart your lives with the ILP? Yeah. Remember, there are 26 letters in the alphabet. If we tried A, and we tried B, and then we tried P, and then we tried P, and we even tried U, and we tried M, and we tried C. Now, don't you have time to try the I, the L, and the P? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Change is what this country needs. Hope is what this country deserves. Love is what the ILP will bring. A place of peace, justice, and equality for all. To the youths of this country, as young people, we must not limit ourselves to the expectations of others. Not because your mother, your father, your granny, your uncle, your grandmother, your nan, and whoever it was said to you that you must vote for this party because this is what we are. That's a sad reality. You have a choice to make. You have to know that where you are is not where you want to be and that you want to step forward into the future. Do you want to keep rereading those chapters in your life or to step forward into a new one? Cut from the basketball team. He was locked home and he ran home and he locked himself into a room and he cried. Can anybody guess who that person was? Michael Jordan. A teacher once told him he was too stupid to learn anything and that he should going to feel somewhere where he could see by the virtue of his pleasant personality. That person was Thomas Edison, the person to watch so much. Fired from a newspaper because he lacked imagination and had no original ideas. That person was Walt Disney, the creator. As told to me by my school dean, you would amount to nothing in life. And you have to change what people's parts are for you because you have to choose your destiny and you have to create. You cannot limit yourself to what somebody else has for you. Mocked, ridiculed, sentenced to death. Who he was? He was Jesus Christ. He was the savior of the people. He came forward to offer a new hope for a generation, a lost generation. Passed away, detained and locked up. He, was rem he, was rem he remained humble. He was ready to continue serving the people of Trinidad and Tobago. Who is he? Austin Jack Warner, my political leader. And the next Prime Minister of Trinidad and Tobago. <laughs> Can you take this chance with us? Can you go forward with me? And this is why that we have confidence that together we can make a difference. Your children needs, needs you, your friends, your family, your future needs you, and Trinidad and Tobago needs you. So will you join with us and show the world your green power? Will you join with us and show Trinidad and Tobago your green power? No power tonight, boy. Love, love, and hope. 
Let us let Trinidad and Tobago be that place our forefathers dreamt of. As our motto says, together we aspire, together we achieve. And with the ILP, this country will go far. It will go to places unforeseen and to mountains unforetold. Thank you. Um, no doubt, if Janelle ends up in Parliament, with, 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 your, with your vote, of course, she will put honour back into honourable into our parliament. If we remind ourselves that this government promised that it would not build tall buildings, it would have been of the people. But don't worry, we got box trains instead. If you touch one member of the ILP, you touch all. And today in parliament, today in parliament, that gentleman, Mr. Munilal. What gentleman? He's no doctor. Mr. Munilal. You made a mistake and you touch our chairman, Ms. Vika Ramjit. Munilal, watch out. We are coming for you. I say this with no apology. When you touch one member of the IOP, you touch all. Then, then stay close to me then, because I might lose it tonight. I was very angry. Silly season. Silly season is upon us, ladies and gentlemen. And last week, I saw something that was very silly. I saw a maxi, a maxi fill with young persons all in their 20s going to a political meeting, to a political rally during the day. And to my surprise, I saw half case of liquor and cases of beers. And my question is, when you go to a political meeting or a rally with half case of liquor and beers, what is the message that you're going to carry home after that rally? <laughs> so we have to ask a question. Why is it? Why is it some of these political institutions like to keep us intoxicated? Well, I'm going to tell you something tonight. We the ILP, we want you sober. Because we are here to educate you. When you leave this meeting tonight, I bet you, you'll be educated. Honorable political leader, member of parliament for Shaguanas West, Sir St. Jack Warner, deputy political leaders, chairman of the ILP, Ms. Rika Ramjit, members of the executive, members of the head table, ILP family, Barton Street, I say good night to you. Why would they want you intoxicated? Obviously, because between now and the elections, they don't want you to hear about the issues. Well, guess what? We at the ILP, we are going to bring the issues to you tonight. And what are the issues? Let's look at the health sector. Let's look at the health sector. When last have you all been to the hospital? When last? You have to spend 12 hours, sometimes 24 hours at the hospitals before you can see a nurse or a doctor. I went there last year, I believe, or two years ago with my mother. We reached at the hospital. It was, she was deemed as an emergency. We reached there at 4 p.m. A doctor saw her about 3 o'clock the other morning. That's what we have in our hospital. Look at the machinery in the hospital. How many persons have died over the last five years, over the last 10 years, over the last 20 years because of faulty machinery in the hospital? People, persons wanted to do simple MRI scans and other tests. They cannot get it done in the hospitals because the machines aren't working. Or in some instances, the hospitals have none. <laughs> yes, some are stolen too. They built a hospital in San Fernando recently. No respirators in the hospital. 
None. 800 US for a respirator. 800 US. Billions of dollars. No respirator. They built the hospital. Mothers. Mothers and babies over the last few months, ladies and gentlemen. It has been, it's crazy in Trinidad and Tobago. When you look at the number of mothers and the number of babies that have been dying in our public health institutions. What about, what about diseases like cancer? When last have you heard? When last have you heard of someone going to the hospital with cancer and coming out alive? You tell me. When last have you heard about that? They are calling cancer the rich man disease. Because if you don't have money, well, you're dead. <laughs> you're dead with cancer. And, and what, what does the ILP say about that? We are the ILP. We are saying, let's fix the problem in, in the health institutions. There's a shortage, shortage of staff. Why not train and recruit more nurses why not hire more doctors? Why is it so difficult in a country where we have a budget of 5.5 billion this year for the health sector alone? 5.5 billion, and people are dying every day. When, oh yes, poor people, thank you, I was getting to that. Have you ever seen a multi-millionaire die in one of our public hospitals? Have you ever seen a millionaire Go to San Fernando, or Puerto Spain, or Monto, when their children are sick? No, they don't go there. No, so if you have money, you're okay. We are saying, let's make healthcare a, prior a priority in Trinidad and Tobago, because every single life, every life matters to us at the ILP. If the machinery is faulty, for God's sake, for God's sake, fix the machinery. If we don't have ma the, the machinery, buy the machinery. How can we go forward as a nation if every week, every week, citizens in this country are dying? Is that progress? <laughs> let's, look at, let's look at poverty in our country. Studies have shown that over 20% of our population live just below the poverty line. Battle Street, if you make dinner for your family tonight and don't know what you're eating tomorrow night, I'm talking to you. If your baby is sick and you have to go to the money lender to get money to carry your child by the doctor, I'm talking to you. If you had to drop out of school, if you had to drop out of school to support your family financially, Battle Street, I'm talking to you tonight. Why is this, why is this poverty issue so hard to solve? Has any government really wanted to solve the issue of poverty? I'm talking to you, wake up Battle Street. Have they ever wanted to solve poverty? No. <laughs> the Prime Minister, recently asked for five more years to deal with crime. <laughs> what do you think about that? Well, here's, here's what the ILP thinks. It's been proven that a large percentage of the crime in this country can be linked to poverty. Why no one has seriously addressed this issue? Who does it profit? when close to 90% of the population in our prisons constitute of you, the poor people. Thank you. Say it again, who has a prophet? Don't be afraid, Munira, we're calling names tonight. You wanna to touch Rika Ramjit? I, I'm coming for you. Do you remember the state of emergency? Battle Street, do you remember the state of emergency? Who did they lock up? Did they lock up any millionaire? No. Did they lock up any big shot contractor? No. Did they lock up any of the so-called blue icon uh, finances? No. no, they locked up the poor people. So I ask you, so I ask you again, why has every crime plan 
that this government and every other government, why has every crime plan that they came with been targeted at the poor people? Have you ever seen a crime plan that targeted the rich in the country? We want one. We want one. Yes, and I'm saying it's time we start to lock up those politicians who keep who became billionaires over overnight. It's time we start to lock up those contractors who became billionaires in a matter of weeks. If the minister, if the minister of national security declares war on crime tomorrow, Battle Street, hear what I'm telling you. If the Minister of National Security declares war on crime tomorrow, run for your life. Because they are coming to kick down your door. Laventy, they are coming to kick down your door. Port of Spain, they are coming to kick down your door. East West Corridor, they are coming to kick down your door too. And they are going to lock up your children. Ask yourself again. Who profits when the prisons gain tenants and you'll understand how much your government cares about you. But you have to accept some of the blame. Battle Street, Trinidad and Tobago. You want to know how? All right, here's how. You, you Battle Street, you Trinidad and Tobago, you wear their jerseys, you wear their hats, you wave their flags, you wear their emblems, you walk in the hot sun, you walk in the pouring rain for these political institutions. And every five years, you vow to serve them until you die. But every year, every single year, you get to work CPEP. You get to work on a CPEP gang while their friends get billion dollar contracts from the likes of NGC. You'll get a three month contract, a three month job at the corporation while a friend of the government will form a company and accrue 66 million in just two years. You will work hard all your life until you die and you might never own a vehicle, never. Them and their children will migrate after five years to some foreign, to some continent, and they won't have to work another day in their lives. And that's the truth. I want to ask you something. Can you go to the bank and get a loan as a CPEP worker? Can you go to the bank and get a loan as a CPEP worker? Can you buy two acres of land working as a checker or a laborer for the URB? So why do you allow these governments, and this government especially, to treat you like a second class citizen? Wake up people, you have to wake up. Albert Einstein, his theory of insanity, he said is repeating the same act over and over and over and expecting different result. When you go home tonight, look in your mirror. Residents of Battle Street, when you go home tonight, look in your mirror, ask yourself, was Albert Einstein talking about me? <laughs> this government believes that the wealth of the state belongs to them and their family. We are the ILP. We believe that the resources of this country belong to you, the poor people. Yeah! And our manifesto will prove that we will put you first. The next time you attend a rally or a political meeting, leave the alcohol home. Stare your favorite politician straight in the eye. Tell them the ILP has plans to give us priority health care. Tell them the ILP has a master plan to attack poverty in Trinidad and Tobago. Tell them the ILP believes we can fight crime without kicking down every poor person's door in Trinidad and Tobago. And then ask them, what are you going to do to improve my standard of living? Thank you, Battle Street. I'm the fireman. Battle Street, you all seen a pattern with all the speakers?
the people being affected. This government claiming that they finished 90 to 95 percent of all that they said that they would do in this five-year term. But if you look at what, what, what is left in that five percent, crime, poverty, corruption, all that in the five percent. Badu Street, if you look to the north of you, you see that oil refinery, the wealth of this, this area. Did you get what you deserved in this area from this government? Have you seen the kind of changes to say you, there's, there's some kind of equity being um, passed around in it for, from this government? You have to answer that because, because the reality of it is that there are certain people whose pockets getting deeper and deeper, they, their hands can't even reach the bottom of it. Right, but without, but let me let me introduce the next speaker as well because I mean I mean this speaker I will tell you something about our chairman. If you don't know the profession of our chairman and you talk to her for two minutes before you finish talking to her, you're gonna know she's a lawyer. So our chairman, Ms. Rika Ramjit, let me welcome her to the podium. Hey, what is that? Like it's fun. Oh no, too much parasites, and this evening we, we see a clown in Parliament as, as well. It can't get better than that. A very present good evening to my political leader who's on his way. All other protocols observed because I didn't plan to deal with something, but that man made me come out here to plan to deal with it. Now, today, they were debating a very important bill. It's called the State Land Security of Tenure Act. And what that is about is what they're trying to tell Trinidad and Tobago is if only we are next five years, we're going to give all some land. But I'm going to deal with that just now. I'm going to deal with that just now. But hear what this man had to say. Because what was read into Hansard had my name, I realized that Mr. A man with his name something like Jackal or something. I can't really remember it right now. Jackal. Oh, okay, thank you. Jackal or Kunilal or something so. Anyway, that man, all in all, they're paying about forty or fifty thousand dollars a month. You know what he's spending money on? Besides going for beauty treatment in the Hyatt, he spent his money on researching me for fifty years because I'm sixty-one. So he going back to when I was eleven to find out my name is not Rekha Parbati Ramjit. It was Parbati Ram Ramuta. Fool didn't know that I get married at eighteen and I take my husband's name. I don't know if it have women in his life that they want to take his stupid name, but he worried that I take my husband's name. And I brought, look, he's sitting here, I married 42 years to the same man. And, and I can't yeah. really say that until I'm dead. Yeah. But, but listen to me, listen to me. He wasting all your money to find out what was my name. He gone back 50 years, and the only thing he could find out is my name was Reka Par was Parbati Ramuta. The next thing I want to tell him, I come from a family of love. My grandparents called me Reka since I know myself. I honored my grandparents by putting my name on my legal practicing certificate. <laughs> He didn't have to go and spend all the money to find that out, you know, he could have just asked me, I would have tell him. <laughs> so I don't want him, I do not want him to spend all your money anymore researching me, so I could tell him. I grew up in a farming family. I used to sell in the market, right in San Fernando. My grandmother couldn't come, so I bright, so she carried me to out. I used to plant lettuce, and more than that, more than that, I want to tell all you, I do all sorts of jobs. I was in the fish industry. I became an accountant and when I turned 50 years old, I became an attorney at law. If he didn't know that, he know that today. So don't waste the people money, jackal kunilal, and, and try to find out about me. And I will tell him something else. Anytime he 
he wanted to find out about me. All he had to do is pick up the phone and call 393-1340. And when I see Jackal Kunila come up, I will answer. <laughs> but I'll tell you what happened. Don't get tired up, you know. Don't get tired up with this man. Mr. Jack Warner stood up and asked him, when you get a certificate of comfort, if you die, will it be able to pass on to your children? You know, he didn't know the answer for that. He said he had to send and research. He researched in me, but he didn't research that the, the act that he debated. So tonight, I will educate him because he's a clown. So tonight, I will tell him how it is. Now, let me tell you something. You see, let me tell you something. Today, he stand up and say, Mr. Warner asked him, well, tell me something. What about all the people on the train lines? They're on government land. You know what he say? He said, well, that wasn't a designated area. We're trying to move them from current. I passed here yesterday. The place full of people whose houses need repairing. When Mr. Warner says to him, but you cannot take that certificate of comfort and go to the bank for loan, he said, well, they could get state helping, you know, those handouts. But I passed through there. How many of you all get any grant to fix all your house? How many of you get any certificate of comfort. Nobody down in this area. And you see, the, he always he admitted it. He admitted that you cannot use the certificate of comfort to go to a bank. You cannot do that. Right? But here where the lies coming from. This government in place five years. In two weeks time, they have to parole parliament. Right? Two weeks time. So in the last two weeks, he want to rush through a bill to say that he extending the time for people to apply for the certificate of comfort. But people, they must analyze what he's doing. Out of his own mouth, he said there were 23,000 applications from Trinidad and Tobago. And they, and they fulfill 7,000. Well, I'm not too good at maths, right? Because I'm a lawyer. But 7,000 from 23 leave 16,000. So you're expanding the time, but you can't even deal with the 16,000 that existing. So who is he trying to fool? And then he says, well, you know, it kind of take long to deal with it. So we could only give, give out 70 leases in five years. But what they want to tell you is, let us, what they're trying to do is change the act to say, anybody who resided on state land up to June 2014, you are entitled to a certificate of comfort. But what good is that if since 1998, you cannot assess the 23,000 applications you have? What, you want to get 100,000 man, I know what to do with it? Make a bonfire? That is what he's trying to tell you all. He hasn't dealt with the 23,000 he has, but he wants to encourage you to bring bring in about 100,000 more. But people, let me tell all you something. You see the land that you're living on? If it is state land, it is not Mr. What is my name again? Kunilal. Kunilal. It's not Mr. Kunilal land to give. The state land belongs to the people of Trinidad and Tobago. He has nothing to give. Well, I don't know if he has, but, but he has no land, state land to give. Let me explain. And I want to talk to the people on the train line. I told them today when we saw them yesterday, I have something to say. I spoke to some of you, and you have been living on those lands in excess of 30 years. People tell me generation about, upon generation living on this land. So long as you are living on the land for in excess of 30 years, you are entitled to that land by adverse possession. Don't let him come and tell you that he's going to give you a certificate of comfort. You know why? Once you do that, you lose your right to the land because any time he feel like it, he could come and move you to somewhere you don't want to go to. So when he come here, you tell him to ride whatever animal he come here in and get out. <laughs> 
Now let me tell you something about this state land security. You have, you have to ask yourself, you know. You have to ask yourself why he wait two weeks before Parliament prorogue to come and debate to come and debate that bill, the amendment to the bill. And all he want to do is extend the time. And I will tell you why. It's because they're so frightened. They have become so afraid. They're losing their grip. Kamala Prasad Bissessa knows that she's not going to make another term. And so she's trying to fool people who are underprivileged. I'm not going to call nobody in Batu Street and the train line point. You know why I walk yesterday? Boy, I envy one thing. I never see so many fruit trees. So, uh, I saw sour sap, mango, you name it. I each and to steal one or two, but afraid. I'm real afraid. You know, I keep telling Clarence who real to our Clarence, please pick one from me. Clarence said, no, you cannot do that. But what I want to tell you, what I observe, that train line area and this area has been neglected by politician after politician. Totally neglected. They're building a uh, box drain all over the place. Well, except down here. They're building box train over and over again. They repaving road where everybody could sit and down on the train line, people's house collapsed because they're not cleaning the drains. Is that not correct? Is that not correct? They are not doing any of the services down any the back there. And you know what people want? They don't want no handouts, you know. People say, please, if you see the number of young people, just help us get jobs. We don't want no $500. We don't want no URP. We want proper jobs because we deserve. We deserve to share the wealth of Trinidad and Tobago. We deserve that. I noticed as well, and I spoke to several people, that they were told that you could come for a grant. But some of them waiting years and cannot get a grant to fix their house. So this area has been neglected by politician after politician, by government after government. And people listen carefully to why that is happening to us. You see all them political analysts who on UNC payroll and PNM payroll. I'm afraid of pre-action letter. Let me bring it on. All of them political analysts who on UNC payroll and PNM payroll, all of them survey takers who on UNC payroll and PNM payroll, you, you know what they want all to believe? They want all to believe it only have two parties in Trinidad and Tobago. So if we disregard the rest, it wouldn't happen. So they're telling you, don't waste your vote. But people, let me tell you something. Those people who write in that, them have one vote. And you have your vote. And your vote, if you believe, if you vote for what is in your heart, it could never be wasted. And, and let me tell you why they're doing that. For years, for years. You know where we're practicing in this country? And we're doing it because they're telling us we can't do any different. Before I go there, I went on one of the media and, they, and somebody asked me, but you all are the third force. I said, third force? If they have nothing like third force and first force and second force, it's political force coming after them. <laughs> we are a political party entitled to go up for election and be going up for 41 seats and none of them must tell you that the party you believe in as is your constitutional right force. Anytime they say that they want you to believe that we don't have a chance. But you decide we have a chance. They don't decide that for you. Why you think Kamla Pasad B. Cecil, and what is my name again? Jackal Kunilal. And the rest of them. Why all you think that they wanted to run
son of Bill because they feel that the son of Bill would have destroyed the ILP. But I should have two people in here who show them otherwise. That is Dane Francois. Look him there. My partner there. And Stephen Mitchell. We lose in court of appeal. But you know what? We stop them. We win because we stop them. All of them were the high strategists and advertising people. Two men in the ILP. And one attorney stopped them. And they come there with the eight attorneys, their Queen's Council, Senior Council, though who have cotton, who have silk, wherever. <laughs> and they didn't get a place. And then Prakash Ramada come two weeks ago and say, well, you know, we'll be debating the, the bill again. You know why I said to Prakash, bring it on. We ready and waiting for you. You will feel a force like you never felt before. get back. You see that I little sidetrack there, but I want to get back. I want to get back to telling you why you cannot allow the analysts and the surveys and whatever and all these shippiness. Why you cannot allow it to happen? Because we allow it for too long. And guess what we're practicing? We're practicing seesaw politics. I call in that word, seesaw politics. Let me explain seesaw politics to all you. So we will know all you are getting on that seesaw. On a seesaw, you always have one enjoying the ride and one down. And when that one come down, the next one go up and enjoying the ride. So for the past so many years, we put in UNC, PNM, UNC, PNM, and nothing is changing. Nothing is changing. Every five years, this country is spending a bigger budget. Every five years, corruption gone up. Every five years, crime gone up. Every five years, the poor people get poorer. Yes. And the rich people get richer. Yes. That's right. Every five years, food prices going up and no agriculture. Yes. Every five years, we turning out children who cannot read properly in school. Yes. And it's getting worse and worse. So we want to get off that seesaw kind of politics. Let them know that they're not going to be enjoying the ride anymore. They cannot be enjoying the ride at our expense. And we wouldn't have people like Jackal Kunilal in Parliament spending your money researching what was my name. But I want to tell him, you know, in case he go and do some more research and Google it and whatever. My name is Reka Parvati Ramjit. Reka means a mark of distinction. Parvati means here this goddess of love. <laughs> I ain't know what Jackal mean and I ain't know what Kunila mean and I really want to know tonight. I really don't want to know that till I'm... You see, I'm trying to avoid this man wasting any time. If he want to come after me, let him come with something good. That, you know he read that into Hansard? You know your children, 30 and 40 years from now, will read that is what he say? That is what we pay the leader of government business in this country to do. And, all they, and they want to put them back. They want all you to give them another five years. Another five years to what? So the budget will go by another 20%. Another listen, listen carefully. She said, you remember the big speech when she didn't say anything, that is Kamala Pasagbi says, sir, when the oil prices drop? She said everything was fine. I am not an economist, but I could understand real thing. Everything fine. Then at the last quarter, she said, we saved $40 million. How here you know she need $1.7 billion now? All you, all you could understand that cabinetics that she working there? Last, uh, last quarter, she saved $47 million, million right? Right, Nigel? Yeah. Yeah. This quarter, she need $1.7 billion. So she takes some from there and put it there. But I say to her, it's easy, you know. You didn't have to tell nobody that. You just had to call up some of them boys and tell them bring back some. I call it no name. If I call name, all you got to be 